somebody's decided to get up. Are you... Whew. I was a bit worried that he was going to start sleeping onto the other side. But no, I think there's a bit of grooming going on. He's been yawning a bit the last few moments, so this is normally a good indication that he's going to become a bit more active. So it could potentially lead to him coming down the termite mound and carry along moving towards his nighttime patrol. Erin, uh, they make all sorts of noises, but uh, I would say the, the most common one, the, the one that they use to mark their territory, is called sewing, and it almost sounds like a chainsaw, and that's why they get that name. Hmm, he's gone onto, down onto the wrong side of the mouth, so we're going to have to move around and see if perhaps we can see him from the other side. Let's see, I'm not too sure where he's gone up to. Ah, he's behind us. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. All right, uh, we're gonna try and figure a way out here, but let's go to Taylor, who's found one of my favorite creatures in the bush. So, Tingana decided to make a move, and he came running and dashing, so we saw him jump onto another Sorry guys, we just had him. He jumped onto another sounder of warthogs. So I'm sure he's not too far from here and they were all dashing onto different directions. And by the sounds of it, it seems like he caught one. Oh, we... In front of us. In fr oh, stride in front of us. Has he got anything in... Let's see. Oh my goodness. He's got him. He's got one of the warthogs. So, very patient leopard, um, he, he just knew where to go and I'm sure he knew this warthog were around here this whole afternoon and he just came, hey? No, I don't mind, sorry, I thought you said against it, sorry guys. Oh. Aiden, you wonder how strong a leopard's mouth is? Well, very, very strong. I mean, he's just managed to pull this little warthog down and he's just uh, busy suffocating it pretty much with the power of its mouth. So I don't think this warthog is still alive. Um, sorry, guys. Mike, if you, I think if you shine from there, he's got a bumba. He just managed to uh, bring down one of those warthogs. Ephraim, you're welcome too. Sorry, as I move around, then my hand moves with me. I've got to learn to multitask a little bit more. Sorry guys, there's another vehicle here with us, so I was just giving him a bit of an idea of what's happening. So you see, he's still holding down this creature, this warthog that we're looking at. By the looks of it, a bit of a youngster. And he, he hasn't moved, and my goodness, it was so, so fast. We just saw him jump onto the onto the, the burrow, and then all of these warthogs started coming out very quickly, and clearly he just decided to dash and make a run for one of them. And even now we can hear some of them outside, uh, outside, just around us. So I am sorry if you find this, this a bit too, too harsh, so you're more than welcome to, to look away and maybe just come back a little bit later. This is, however, pretty much just as raw as, as nature gets. And for, for every life that persists, unfortunately, there, there's more than likely one that has to perish. In this particular case, well, it, it didn't fare well for the warthog, but but this is probably one of the reasons why this male leopard has been doing so well. And I do think that he knew exactly what he was doing the whole afternoon on top of that termite mound, because the warthogs that we found were not too far from there. So I'm sure he knew that um, around this area there were lots of warthogs. He is the territorial animal around here, the dominant male, so he knows all of this area. He knows where to go look for food and where to go look for water. OK, 
Okay, we are going to let you all pretty much recover your breath and we're gonna go to Taylor in the meantime. Okay, that's maybe, I think maybe I can push my luck through here. It's in your one. Very likely he will, unless a part of it gets stolen. All the meaty beats, all the meaty parts, and probably some of the organs. He will leave the tusks and the hooves that he will not eat. Hundred, maybe. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, you see, conveniently up on a tree. He's eyeing the tree. Oh, wait, I got so excited, I turned it off. Um. Mind my head. Sorry. All right, he has brought the, the kill to the base of a marula tree, so I wonder if he's going to try and go all the way up here and put it up there. Sometimes they do that to prevent their kill from being stolen by other nocturnal creatures, maybe other leopards, hyenas. But um, he's definitely looking like he wants to take it up there, so maybe let's just give him a second to, to see what he would want to do. Oh, I think he's gonna make it. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look how strong this animal is. My goodness. Now the tricky part will be to try and keep it up there. Um, okay, I'm going to try to move again. Sorry, just see if maybe I can get through here somewhere and we can actually see the leopard. I can't see. I go slightly forward. There we go. So he's trying to dangle the kill on top of the tree. He's got to put it in a way that it's not going to fall off. This is not a fully grown warthog that he's caught, but rather a youngster. And again, like I say, if you find this too much, please do look away. Um, unfortunately, we, we don't plan for these things. This is just pretty much the way nature wo works all on itself. And as, as tough as it can be sometimes, like I said, it, it is, you know, what a leopard has to do in order to survive. He's, he's still a bit concerned, whereas the warthog is still alive right now because he hasn't let go. And normally, the way that cats, lions, and leopards kill is by suffocation. So I think he's just making sure that everything is fine, that he can reposition the the kill on top of the tree and it won't fall down, fall down, or perhaps still be slightly alive. We really hope it's not. Um, <laughs> Because, yeah, we feel very sorry for the poor warthog, but very happy for Tingana.
heavy or wondering how much weight can a leopard carry um, sometimes they can even carry twice their body weight up a, up a tree maybe not just as high up in this case um, because it was something that it wasn't uh, you will find that they will actually eat a, either feed off of it for a little bit or they will take the, the stomach contents out and feed off the ogres just to make it a bit lighter before they try to put it up a tree well, what's, what an afternoon it's been. Um, I really don't know what to make of all of these mixed emotions that we've got now. I think this just proves that he had a plan all along and we just happened to stumble upon him at the right time to, to, to witness what, what just happened, which is very incredible. And again, I'm, I'm at a loss of words. Um, I hope you guys, well, I, don't, I can't say enjoy, but I hope you guys have a greater understanding of nature today and just how magnificent he's been just to let us have a glimpse into the life of the leopard. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning.